now into animation. I'm going to start off by adjusting the timeline slider so I can see all the frames in our animation. And I'm going to select the locator and bring it back to before any ballooning had started. Now, I'm also going to set the mini set to animation and let's get started. I'm going to set a key on frame 1. We have the locator selected so it just keyed the locator's transformation attributes. So now I'm going to go to frame 26, drag the locator across the model, and set it on the opposite side, and set another key. And now, I'm not going to move it, I'm just going to be setting keys right in the middle between the two keys we set previously. You want to make sure these keys are kind of set in random distances between the other keys. This is really can adjust the effect of the way the crack will look. I mean, you'll see in a second what I mean. So, now that we have these keys created, I'm going to open the graph editor. And since I have the locator selected, these keys will be loaded up in the graph editor automatically. I'm going to select them all, and I want to step their tangents. So I'm going to go to Tangents, Stepped. Now that that's done, when I play the animation, instead of being a smooth translation, it kind of jolts along like a nice cracking and classic animated film style. So, now that that's done, I want to do a little bit more animation to the scene. Because right now, since like I said in the previous tutorial, I can't delete history or do really do anything with this object, because of the boolean, I'm going to make a duplicate of this object. So, I'm just going to make sure I'm on a frame where this boolean has completed. I'm duplicating it. Now I have two poly surfaces. And we're going to select the first poly surface, and we're going to make a group of it. I'm going to call this before group, I mean before crack. And I'm going to select the second surface, put it in a group, and call it after crack. There we go. I'll make this capitalized. There we go. Now, I want to animate this, so basically, on frame 25, you'll be seeing the crack animated geometry, the one with the history, and then on frame 26, we'll switch to the duplicated object, which no longer has that boolean history on it. In other words, a finished piece of geometry, and we can do whatever we want with that. And I'm going to animate the groups. So I'm selecting the before crack group, not the geometry underneath it, just the before crack group. And I'm opening the attributes editor. Just now I'm setting a key. And on frame 26, I'm going down to display in the attributes editor. And unchecking visibility. And I'm setting another key. So I've just animated that object's visibility. So it disappears on frame 26. And I'm going to do the opposite up with the after crack group. I'm selecting the group. And on frame 25, I'm going to uncheck its visibility and set a key. And on, by the way, I just hit S on my keyboard to set that key, which is a shortcut, a little bit quicker than going all the way up to animate. And now on frame 26, I'm checking visibility and setting another key. And now I'm setting another key. There we go. So now you see the before crack geometry all the way up to frame 25 and then on frame 26 we see the after crack geometry so that's good and that's it for animation in the next tutorial I'll teach you how to just do some finishing up and also add a quick dynamic simulation 